Whenever we have communion, I always want to make sure that it's important that we understand what it is. And some of you have been coming here for a long time and have heard me preach communion. Uh, I want you to be understand. It's important that we understand what we're doing. It's not just a ritual. It's not just something you do in church. Some churches do it every time they meet. Some do it once a year. You know, we do it like the first Sunday of each month. But what's important is that we understand what it is. And we always like to read, whenever we have communion, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And um, starting at verse uh, 23, the Apostle Paul was writing to the church of Corinth. If you know anything about Paul's letter to the church of Corinth, because again, all these books are just letters that he wrote. The church of Corinth was messed up. They had all kinds of problems. They had people getting out of line and people doing things and fighting with each other and doing things wrong and everything. And, and, and the, the, this whole letter, it deals with straightening out things that was going on in the church. And he said in verse 23, and he said in his letter, he says, I've received of the Lord. The Apostle Paul is writing this. That which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. We all know community. He took bread. And when, he, when he, he had given thanks, now, now listen, think about this. He was being betrayed, but yet he was still thanking God. <laughs> All right. That's another message in itself, but, uh, but it isn't. Well, anyway. And he said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. We had said often that, he was celebrating a Passover. It was a Passover Seder. And in that Seder, there are three, four cups that they pass around. The third one is called the cup of redemption. When he took that cup, he said, this is the cup of the new covenant written in my blood. He said, this is the cup of the new testament or the new covenant in my blood. This do ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. Now, verse 26. And here's, here's what we always kind of land on. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Now, I always say this. That what we're doing when we take communion, we look back to the cross, which happened 1,900, 2,000 years ago, 1,900 years ago. We look back to the cross, and we look forward to his coming again. How many people believe Jesus is coming back? Do you believe Jesus is coming back? Okay, so we, we look back and we look forward. But something that I miss, and something I think we miss all the time, what about right now? We look back. And we look forward, but what about right now? Are we showing his death right now? And people say, well, what do you want? What do you want? Are we supposed to kill ourselves or shed blood? No. We're admonished in God's word to live a life of dying. As I said, pretty morbid. I'm, I'm not talking about wasting away physically dying. I'm talking about this. We're, we're supposed to live a life of dying to self that Christ might live in us. Does that make more sense? And God wants us as believers to show his death to all who look at us. That's hard to do that sometimes. It's hard to do it sometimes. That, that was just kind of like a little intro. I want you to turn with me, and this is where we're really going to spend some time. Over in 1 Peter, which is toward the back. 1 Peter chapter 4. And uh, this was a letter that Peter, we all know who Peter was, the Apostle Peter. He was the one who was like Jesus' second in command when Jesus was here. All right, and he was the one that had the big mouth. Peter had a big mouth, man. He was always shooting his mouth up. Got him in trouble a few times, and he got blessed a few times. But this is, this, is, this is Peter. And he wrote this letter shortly before his own death. Because Jesus told Peter that he was going to give his life for, for, for his faith. So he wrote this letter shortly before that. And he's, he wants to equip the Christians for what is coming in their world. Now, this is, again, 2,000 years ago. He said this in verse 1. For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, 
Arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. You might as well resolve yourself to the fact that living a life as a Christian is not going to be a bed of roses. Even though in this nation that we have lived in for many decades, it's been kind of like, we just sort of like got a free pass. But it's changing. He says, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind, for he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. I'll tell you what. When the pressure's on, when you're being persecuted, it's awful hard to sin. <laughs> now, last week, we, came, we got home from church Sunday night, okay? And I figured I'm going to chill. I'm going to put something on TV, right? Just kind of sit back and just relax. So the Grammys were on. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. How many people watch the Gram? You guys all know what the Grammys are, right? Okay. So I thought, well, I just, you know, I got there, started, I forget it, eight or whatever it was. And I said, well, so I turned it on. I turned the Grammys on. And it came on, and there was this girl on there who was scantily clad. Okay. I don't know who it was. I found it later it was Beyonce. I, I don't know who these people are. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this. You guys know who Beyonce is, right? See, now, see now, now if this was, if, if, if this was, if this was uh, 40 years ago and I was sitting where these kids were, they'd be talking about, like, the Beatles. Okay? How <laughs> many people know them? Some of you are old enough to remember that, right? The Beatles, right? And uh, Herman's Hermits. You know, come on. All right, but now, okay, so I'm sitting there watching this. I'm, I'm, I'm just watching on TV. Right? I'm sitting back in my easy chair, you know, a little. And I'm, I'm watching. And, and what they're showing, now, now again, <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm glad, I'm so, I'm so blessed we have these kids here. She was doing stuff that they wouldn't have put in movies 50 years ago. Okay? Now, I only watched for 30 seconds. I did. <laughs> that was enough research for me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, was, I could use that for an excuse, but I didn't. I watched for 30 seconds. I said, I'm not watching this, man. I turned it off. Now, I understand. And, and later, I, I read stuff, you know, because I get on Facebook, right? And, and, and I found out, somebody said something on there about uh, later on her, her husband came on. And they was doing things they would never have shown in the movie 50 years ago. I didn't see it. Then they said, then somebody said something about a wedding. This is in a Grammy Award. This is, they had a, they had a marriage sermon. So I said, my, my morbid curiosity got the best message. I got to check this. So I got on YouTube, you know, how do we ever survive without it? And I watched this thing. And they had like the high priestess herself, Madonna, up there. Sing. But she was dressed. <laughs> she was covered. But she was singing a song about love, you know. It was, and, and so uh, out comes Queen Latifah with, you know, and she's pronouncing man and wife. I guess she bought a license somewhere for 50 bucks and, on the Internet, and she said, <laughs> Reverend, Reverend Queen Latifah. And she's out pronouncing man and wife. And out in the, in the aisles, they got these couples. Some are boys and boys and, and girls and girls. And they had a couple token, you know, traditional male and female. And I'm thinking to myself, they're spitting in the face of God. You know, devil is, the devil is not ashamed to preach his doctrine. Amen. He'll do it at 150 decibels with laser lights going on. He's not ashamed. Somebody else told me they had some kind of other satanic thing on there. I don't know. But this, this, was, this was right in public. They're just like thumbing their nose at God. Yeah. And say, here's what we think about your, your work. And they basically told anybody who was a Christian who believed in Jesus or believed the Bible, they basically said, Here, here's what we think about your Bible. Now, I say all that to say this. There were Christians who were nominated for awards, gospel music awards. <laughs> you know, and they were nominated to get a Grammy. There was one young lady who was nominated for an award. She, she went there with her husband, and when she saw that stuff, she got up and she left. She left. None of the other ones did. 
And when she left, her name is Natalie Grant. Some of you have heard Natalie Grant. Good singer, great singer. There were other ones who were there who were, who were good singers and good songwriters. They didn't leave, they stayed there. Natalie Grant died. You know what? They tore her up. She didn't say anything. She didn't protest. She didn't hold a sign saying this is bad. She just, her and her husband just decided they didn't want to watch it. They got up and they left. She didn't get on the internet. She didn't go on Facebook. She didn't post a, nothing. She just, she just, they just left. They tore her up. She died that night. She showed the death of Christ that night by getting up and saying, I'm not looking at this mess. None of the other ones did. They all waited to see who was going to win. They went up and got their awards and said, thank you very much. I thank the Academy. Okay, now I said all that to say this. If it was you, would you have left? Huh. If, you, if you were waiting for a Grammy award, would you have just turned your head and just said, oh, well, I'm just not going to pay that. Let me ask another question which might get a, a little negative response. Did you turn it off? Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> man, not, not only did they, not only did some folks, wouldn't, wouldn't they leave, they wouldn't even turn it off their TV. Okay, now listen. I said all that to say, now, this, First Peter chapter 4. You see, this is serious stuff. Because what Peter, when Peter was writing this letter, you know what? He was writing it to people who were getting ready to be fed to lions. He was writing to people, to a group of people, because back then the Christians were like, they were, they were off, uh, you know, offshoots, they were outcasts, they were misfits. Because they were different. They didn't go along with the program. They rejected all the stuff in the Roman Empire. They wouldn't bow down to the emperor. They wouldn't worship the emperor. So they, they, they segregated themselves. And the rest of the people in the Roman Empire, they began to look at them and they began to, to tell stories about them. They said, all oh, these Christians, they're pedophiles and they're, and they're cannibals because they eat flesh and drink blood. And they, and they started telling all these stories about them. And, and Nero, when he wanted to build a new city in Rome, he burned half the city down and blamed the Christians. And everybody believed them. So this letter that Peter is writing, he was writing to a bunch of folks that's getting ready to go through a hard time. And it's no different because if you stand up for what's right today, they're going to tear you up. He says, for as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. Do we believe that as believers? For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. When we walked in lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries, there was a time in my life that I would not have turned it off. In fact, before I was saved, not only would I not have turned it off, I probably would have taped it and watched it over and over again. Because I was a sinner. And everything I did was pointed toward my flesh. But now that I'm saved, I'm supposed to die to my flesh. Now that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, I'm, I'm, supposed to, I'm supposed to live to him, allow his life, allow the Holy Spirit to live inside of me and kill my flesh. Sometimes my flesh does not like to die. You see, see we, we, we look at something like that. And we say, oh, it's all this like sexual stuff. But it doesn't have to be that. See, before I was saved, you know what? Not only would I have been watching this and taping it, I'd be spending all my time down at casinos. I'd be spending all my time sitting in a bar. I'd be spending all my time, you know, eating and drinking, doing everything that pleased my flesh. And not, not caring two hoots about what God thought about anything. He says, listen to verse 4. See, it's important. For these young people here, and I thank God for them. Yes. When, when I became a Christian, when I gave my heart to Jesus Christ, you know what I found out? There were some folks who didn't want to hang with me no more. Right. <laughs> people who were my friends, when I started talking about Jesus, they say, uh, oh, excuse me, I got to go. <laughs> I got something else to do. They quit inviting me. 
to their parties because they knew I wouldn't go anyhow. They don't have nothing to do with me. Some of them. That's why Peter said, wherein they think it strange that you run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. It's like, you know, they, they, your friend said, what got into you? I don't like to go drinking after work no more. I had a friend of mine at work, and I was kind of quiet about myself. When I first got saved, I was kind of quiet about it. I was kind of laid, laid back. People started asking me, what's wrong with you? I'd say, I got saved. They said, what do you mean you got saved? I said, I got saved. Then I have to tell them about getting saved. And, 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 and they thought it was strange. And they started to badmouth me. Anybody know about getting bad mouth because of your faith? It says, verse 5, Who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead? For this cause was the gospel preached unto them that are dead. Well, what does that mean? It means this. I was dead one time and somebody gave me the gospel. You were dead. If you're saved today, you were once dead. Now you're alive through faith in Jesus Christ. See, that's why we show his death, because I died with him on the cross. The old man died with him on the cross, and now I'm, I'm filled with the Spirit. It's, it's his life that's inside of me now. That's why I can't watch it. That's why I can't keep listening to it. That's why i got to turn, turn the, the TV or the radio off when they're pl playing junk like that. That's why, because I'm a new man. Not because I've been good or because I'm doing good stuff, but because I've given my heart to Jesus Christ, and he's given me a new life. He says... For this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the Spirit. People can say what they want to me. I'm concerned about what God thinks about me. You can, you can, you can say anything you want about me. He says this, But the end of all things is at hand. It's coming. Somebody said, well, that was 2,000 years ago. That's right. We're, we're a day closer. <laughs> It's coming. Jesus is coming back. He's coming. And when he comes back, it's going to be the day of the Lord. It's going to be a day of judgment. It's going to be, day, it's going to be a great and terrible day of the Lord. He's not coming back as a babe in a manger. People get the warm fuzzies when they think about, oh, God loves everybody. He hates the workers of iniquity. That's what the Bible says. He showed his love by sending his son to the cross. If we don't go there, we don't know God's love. We can't if it's not by the blood of Jesus. Just reading a little bit. And then, okay. Verse 7. But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore what? Sober. Oh, man. That, that, that doesn't just mean not drinking. You know, when we hear the word sober, I think the newer translation says serious. We need to take it seriously. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto what? Prayer. And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover a multitude of sins. Thank God, man. I'm glad, for, I'm glad this word charity, it really means love. I'm glad love covers a multitude of sins because I got a few I've been dealing with. And I thank God you folks, will, the love of God will cover them. And you got a few too. And the love of God will help me cover them for you because that's what love covers. Well, somebody, somebody said over here, we need to pray for one another. <laughs> Not pray on one another. <laughs> <laughs> we need to pray for each other, not talk about each other. Okay. Listen. He goes on and he gives some exhortations. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. As every man has received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Listen, in these times, we need to be together as the body of Christ. Not just this congregation, but every Christian congregation in town, the pastors. We need to be together, encouraging one another, praying for one another. When one weeps, we all weep. When one rejoices, we all rejoice. That's the way it ought to be. He says, 
Verse 10, as every man has received a gift, so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as the ability which God gives, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Who glorified Jesus Christ at the Grammy? One girl and her husband had decided they weren't going to stick around. All the other Christians who were there just waiting to see if they was going to win. That was more important. Then he says this. Now, now again, Peter is writing this to folks that are getting ready to be thrown to the lion. Because that's what they did to them back in the Roman Empire. They fed them the hungry lions. I mean, they put them in the Colosseum and there were lions that hadn't eaten for like three weeks. That's not a fairy tale. All through history, Christians, you know, Fox's Book of Martyrs, you want to get an eye opener? Get you a copy of that. You might not get too far in it. The price that people paid for their faith. He says, beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial. It was just to try. You know what? I'm, I'm so glad God does not give me a future, you know, that I could see in the future. Because I think if God could show us, if God would show us what's going to happen in the next six months or a year or two years or five years, we probably all want to get on a boat somewhere and go to an island where nobody knew where we were. It's going, to get, it's going to get ugly. It's going to get worse than what it is right now. It hasn't gotten any better. <laughs> Do you realize, and, and again, I, I can remember, now, now I, I want to ask you kids something, and, and you don't have to answer out loud, but I just, because these young people here, okay, when was the last time, and maybe, maybe this is true, because I haven't been to a movie. When was the last time you saw a movie where they didn't use profanity? When I was growing up, they never used that in movies. You never heard a dirty word in a movie. Never heard a dirty word in a movie. When was the last time you saw a movie where they didn't have some kind of sexual thing going on? When we were growing up, that was... They wouldn't even let Lucy and Desi sleep in the same bed together. But now, we're living in a culture that thinks we're crazy because we want to see righteous stuff. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice! Rejoice! I'm supposed to rejoice in a trial? And listen, he's not talking about getting a parking ticket here. (laughs) Rejoice when they feed you to the lions. Rejoice when they tear you up for standing up for what you believe. That's a quiet message this morning. (laughs) But rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. You see, the more we're like Jesus in this life, the more we'll just thank God for his appearing. Don't get comfortable. Don't get comfortable. Verse 14. Man, this is good stuff. If you be reproached for the name of Christ, happy... (laughs) I'm not happy when people give me a tear me up because I believe in Jesus. I sure don't feel like it. I'm sure old Natalie Grant, man, she, she got tore up. I'm sure her heart was tore up because people were saying things about her. But she said something like this. She said, I've never been prouder to be a Christian. That's what she said. She didn't badmouth anybody. She says, I've never been prouder to be a servant of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, I, wish the whole, I wish every church everywhere would be full of people like that. You could tear me up and call me names and slander me all you want to. I'm going to say, thank God. Jesus said when they do that for his sake, you might as well do a dance. If you be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are you. For the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. On their part, he is evil spoken of. But on your part, he's glorified. You know, when Jesus talked about being glorified, what was he talking about? Hanging on a cross. 
But let none of you suffer as a murderer or a thief or as an evildoer or as a busybody in any man's matters. Oh, man, hallelujah. <laughs> Ain't no murderers or thieves in here, but I don't know about some of them other ones. Yet if any man suffer, no, no, not in here. I'm sorry. No, it's, it's somebody else's. It's the church down the street. Okay. <laughs> Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on his behalf. Go ahead. Feel that way while, while, the, while the, the lion's getting ready to tear you up. Glorify God. Could you do it? I know I sure couldn't do it in my own flesh. But filled with the spirit and the glory of God? Yeah. If Jesus could do it on the cross and say, Father, forgive me, I don't know what they're doing. If he could do it and the same spirit's dwelling inside of us, you could do it too. You might get a chance to prove it. You know, they're not feeding anybody the lions today, but some of them people that was going on in that grand, they would love to feed us the lions. They hate us. And they're not afraid to tell us. A few more verses and we're going to partake of the Lord's day. He says, verse 17, here we go. For the time has come that judgment must begin where? More and more and more, God is going to find out who is going to get up and leave. God is going to find out who's going to turn it off. God's looking and saying, who's going to take, who's going to take the music off? Who's going to throw the CD out? I said CD because these kids don't know what records are. <laughs> when I got saved, I probably had a couple thousand record albums. That's, that was my thing. The Holy Spirit, no, no pastor told me, no, the Holy Spirit said, get rid of them. I said, well, let's see, I can take them over uh, B&D Records and probably get about two bucks a piece for them. God said, no, throw them out. Destroy them. It's okay. That's what I get. You kids know what a record is? A big bike? Okay. <laughs> that used to be all they had. <laughs> we didn't have little MP3 things. We just had these big records, and we had to put them on the turntable and have a needle run through them. And <laughs> Are you willing? What you? Judgment. Listen. Judgment must begin right here. You point to yourself first. Before you point to me or point to anybody else, I'll point to me. Judgment begins here. And judgment begins here. And judgment begins here. You know why this country is going to hell in a handbasket? Because preachers drop the ball. I'm not talking the last five years or ten years. I'm not talking Democrat or Republican presidents. I'm talking about preachers that should have been preaching the gospel or preaching about some other silly stuff. And they're doing it more and more. There's, oh, there's still some. Listen, there's a lot of them that's preaching God's word. I know a bunch of them from just a few blocks of here that's preaching God's word. The time has come. The judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what's it going to be like for them? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? You know, when I was watching that stuff, I was angered. I was mad because they were, they, were, they were thumbing their nose at God. But at the same time, I thought to myself, they're going to stand before the very God that they're mocking. They're going to stand before that God. And I start to feel sorry for them. They got money coming out their ears. Wealthy. Everything they need. Fame. Respect of the world. Talent. Ability. But someday, they're going to be naked in front of the God that they're mocking. And I felt sorry for them. I said, God, I said, can you save them? What will it take to save them? They're so hardened and they're so deep in their sin. Because you know what? When it comes right down to it, I really don't want to see anybody go to hell. I don't want to see the, the worst 
devil worshiper. I'd, I'd love to see him get saved. I don't want to see him go to hell. If judgment begins here, what's it going to be like? You know, they fed the early Christians to the lions, which must have been a horrible thing. But they have eternity with the Father. These people that live in luxury and they have everything they need and they, and, they, and, they, and they just spit in God's face. They better enjoy it now because eternity is a long time. See, and I feel sorry for them. I do. I, mean, I, think, I think the love of Christ, you know, my flesh and my, my, own, my, own, my own self, I'm just, like, I'm just like angry with them. Why are you doing that to my Lord? Then I think, God, they're all going to spend eternity If the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit to the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. We prepared the Lord's table this morning. But before we partake of it, we have an open communion. All are invited. If you're born again and saved. That's God's only requirement. That's not our requirement. It's not our table. It's his table. I want to ask you this. We look back to his crucifixion. We look forward to his coming. But are you showing forth forth his death? Christian, believer. If you're not a believer, then this really doesn't apply to you. If you're, if you're not a believer and you want to be, we'll give you that opportunity before we partake, before we take communion. But are you showing forth his death every day? Do you turn it off? Will you walk out? Will you leave? Will you, will you, will you be willing to be lambasted for your faith in the media, by your friends, by your family? Anybody here ever have a family tear them up? Are you willing? See, see that's why, why we think, oh, God. God says, rejoice. When they, when they make a mockery of everything you believe, do a dance. Praise the Lord. It means, it means you're doing something. That's the way it's supposed to work. You're not, listen, they're not going to give you applause. Oh, they might give you a little polite, you know, while you're going up to get your award. Thank God. Be different. When I was growing up, Some of you know me. You know, all know this. When I was growing up, when I was like the ages of these kids, I wanted to be cool. My, my heroes were the beatniks. You know the beatniks? <laughs> yeah, you put the little brand of sunglasses on. Cool, man. Cool, dude. I couldn't wait till I could grow a little, you know, <laughs> a little beatnik. Because they, so, they were so rebellious and so, they were so out there. I said, cool. It's cool. Then they then they had then they had then they had the hippies. You know, let's all go to California and take take LSD and drugs and get, that was like my, my dream. What do you want to do when you grow up? I want to go to California and live in live in San Francisco. Get some of that good stuff that the, you know, that all them all them rock and rollers used to use. You know. Cool. Rebellion. I always wanted to be different. You know what I found out? The best way to be different? Follow Jesus Christ, man. That's about as different as you can get. (laughs) When I first got saved, I found out, hey, all that stuff they've been telling me all these years, it's nothing but a bunch of baloney. It's not true. They lied to me. They lied to me. I was, talking, I was talking to a young man who, this is a number, a number of months ago, he was talking about some of the music I used to listen to that I thought, 
You know, because because let's face it, some of the guys they made some good music back then. Okay, I'm a musician, so you know I kind of like music. They made some good music, very talented, very proficient, good songwriters. We were talking about one that I, I was I was very enamored of. It was this one guy I, I really was one of my favorites, and this guy said, "Oh man, yeah." He started mentioning his name. I said, "Oh," yeah. and I said, "You know what?" I said, "He's in hell now. He's burning in hell now. He died." All his fame and talent and ability. If he would, he hated Jesus. You see, I want to be different. I want to be a follower of Jesus Christ. Am I willing to pay the price? Yeah. Are you? We're going to partake of the Lord's table. Before we do, I want to pray. If there's anybody in here that does not know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, and you would like to, we'll give you that opportunity to come.